मम ज्ञान तिरंध से ज्ञानंजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मितम येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वंदेहम श्रीगुरोतपदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्रीप सागरजात सह गणरघुनाथन्वित सजीव साद्वैत सवधूत पर्यन सहित श्रीकृष्णचैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपाद सह गणलिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरतृषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वूपक भक्तावता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्त श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतराधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद्भागवत थर्ड कैंटो थर्ड चैप्टर वर्स नंबर इलेवन Uddhava is continuing to delineate the past times of Lord Krishna to Akura when they met at the bank of Yamuna, and in this chapter he is talking about Krishna's activities after he moved to Mathura and to Dwarka from Vrindavan, and he spoke about his marriage. to satya and rukmani and the 16000 wives and then he described that he had 10 sons from each wife big family and then he spoke that how he had killed some demoniac people who were causing disturbance terrorism So Krishna was a very good anti-terrorist. He was perfect in removing terror. So he had a big secret agency, and he will know who is doing what, and then he will find a suitable means to remove them. Root of the tales. So he said, Kali Evan, who came from the west to disturb here. Right now, this terrorist came also from Pakistan. Previously, also, Kali Evan came from there. <laughs> yeah, he was from there only. That's why it's called Kali Evan. And then, then there were some local people also causing disturbance. So he got them removed. and in this verse he is giving a more list of such people say sambaram dividam banam muram balvalam evacha anyan sedanta vaktradin avadhit kaas ghatayat says that there was sambarasur dividh and monkey monkey there also disturbance always breaking things and then banasur 
who has uh, put uh, Krishna's grandson in prison and there was Mura because of whom Krishna is called Murari and Balwal he was killed by Balram and there was also Dantvatra etc. they were all killed by him directly or they were killed by his Balram etc. So there is not much comment on this. He says, Atharantram Kansha Nipan Hathe Iti Adagama Bhava Arsha and Hathe Niti Pathe Bhagu Iti Shinsha. So he is asking that who else were killed after that. Like these days, whenever there is some terrorism attack, then people are glued to the television. Right? They want to see every detail what happened then. And television ratings go up. So previously there was no tel television, then they were asked that what happened and how the person was killed. So many times this description comes of the demons being killed. So this is one list. Why Krishna came? Because there were too many terrorists at that time. Like now, there were even more. So there are so many terrorists and big ones that God has to come himself. There is no other solution. Majority of the population was like engaged in terrorism. So he has to establish peace in the society. And that was possible only if God could come. Otherwise these people will finish off everyone. Or at least trouble everybody. So that's why Krishna came. So after killing this, then what else he did? <coughs> there are also many powerful kings. One of the difference between the terrorist now and the terrorist in the past was that in the past terrorism was done by people who were ruling. They were not just some ordinary people, some simple organizations and then getting into terrorism, but they were rulers. So then Krishna has to remove these rulers also. And one of the way he did was to gather them together at Kurukshetra, where the battle of Mahabharata was fought. So that is being described here. It says, Athate Bhatri Putranam Pakshayo Patitan Nirpan Chachalabho Kurukshetra Nyeshama Patitan Banehi so at that time there was rivalry between Kauravas and Pandavas, they were cousin brothers and usually there is always problem among the family members because those who are very close to you, they only become your enemies, strange people don't become enemies, your brothers, sisters, husband, wife, son, they become enemies. So here also the same thing happened that Kauravas and Pandavas, they were actually sons of two brothers. Dhritarashtra, his sons were called Kauravas, hundred sons, and Pandu's sons were five, they were Pandavas. And they had rivalry and Kauravas were trying to harass them and took away their kingdom and in the gambling they usurped all their wealth including even their physical bodies so finally Pandavas were sent to forest in exile so you can imagine living in the forest in cold weather 
no hot water in the morning <laughs> and no chai to drink <laughs> and no sleeping bag <laughs> so can you imagine living in the cold outside so it was troublesome situation and after suffering so long 13 years 13 is lucky number or unlucky number 13 mm -hmm. yeah some somebody said that 13 is lucky so it was unlucky because they were there in the exile for 13 years that's why 13 became unlucky <laughs> why 13 is called unlucky because the devotees of Krishna were in the forest for 13 years. <laughs> so, that's why people consider 13 as unlucky. Yeah. Unless there is some other story. This is your This is my story. <laughs> so, this was so unlucky that when they came back to get their kingdom because they were promised, then they did not get it. So then there was no choice but to fight. And people were so enthusiastic about fighting. Like these days there is a drafting in some countries like Israel. And the young people, they don't want to go in this drafting. Previously, there was no drafting and people were so happy to go for war. What is drafting? Drafting. Hmm? What is drafting? Drafting, you know, the compulsory, you go know, for military training. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Italy also they had. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. so, at that time, there was no drafting, but people, there was no need. They were just happy to fight. They thought that this is a golden opportunity if you could go to war and fight. And Krishna is saying, Sukhana Kshatriya Partha Labantha Yuddham Idrisham. He says that those Kshatriyas who get an opportunity to go to battle like this, they are very happy. So Arjuna did not want to fight and Krishna drafted him. <laughs> because he had his own agenda. He wanted that Arjuna kills all these terrorists. And Arjuna was not ready to fight, he was declining. So terrorists are very interested in fighting and devotee wants to go and do some bhajan. <laughs> he said it that I will beg and leave Bhakshamati Haloki. He says, I'll become a Babaji and do Madhukari. <laughs> and Krishna did not ap approve it. He wanted to go to Radha Kund and get a bhajan kutir there. <laughs> <laughs> but Krishna did not approve. <laughs> says, now you have to fight. So yeah, the poor fellow had no choice. <laughs> so he said that when these two parties were there, then what happened? All the people from all over the world came to participate. Like sometimes here in Vrindavan, they have Bhandara, feast. And it is called Jhada Bhandara. Means feast for everybody. And everybody is invited to come and eat. You don't need any entry pass, no invitation. So, like that, this was a complete invitation for fighting. That anybody could come and join either this side or that side. And you will be provided weapons and food. That's all, you can fight. So people were so enthusiastic as if they were just starving for this opportunity. Like some people are hungry, they don't get food. And then you give a feast, they will come running, even from 20 miles. 
सो हियर द बिग पीपल केम टू फाइट देर फोर इज एज पतितान रिपान पतितान पतिता एक्चुअली मीन्स फॉल एंड टू फॉल डाउन इट्स लाइक देर देर रनिंग देर लाइक फॉलिंग इन टू इट्स एंड समटाइम देर इज लाइट एंड दिज मस्कीटोज द कम एंड फॉल लाइक देम दे आर कमिंग सो मच दे आर रनिंग दचाल भू द अर्थ वॉज शेकिंग big armies not one or two thousands people were coming in millions at least at least 6 7 million people assembled 6 7 minimum maybe more because 5 million were killed and there would have been more people to take care of the food and water and other arrangement and guards so you can imagine How many people assemble there? So, like a big kumbh mela. You see the kumbh mela? How millions of people go there to take bath? Like that, millions of people came to participate. That earth was shaking with the armies moving, marching. Armies were marching with music. Because it's this mu- army music it excites people. You get so fired up that you forget that you are going for dying. <laughs> <laughs> Music has some kind of brainwashing ability. You know, so the people who go to this rock music concerts, they're completely brainwashed. <laughs> so that's why music is needed for the army. Bhagavad Gita first chapter is described that how much instruments they were banging. That sasa do to mulo bhavat. It was like the whole firmament was filled with the sound of these mridangas, drums, kettle drums, conches, and all these big instruments. Everybody was so happy. So yes, I'm up at the time, belay. Because of the army moving and marching, the earth was disturbed. So Sri Vishnu Chakravarti says, "Kanshya kidrishante tav bhratri putra nam yidhistra adi nam duryodhanascha pakshayo ho patitam praptam." कुरुक्षेत्र आपतताम आगछताम येषा बल सैन्य भूसर्वा चचाल चकंप सो इज सेइंग दैट दीज पीपल हु आर योर नेफ्यूज बिकॉज अक्रूडा वाज आल्सो ब्रदर ऑफ हाफ ब्रदर ऑफ धृतराष्ट्र एंड पांडु सो पांडुवाज एंड कौरवाज आर एक्चुअली नेफ्यूज ऑफ अक्रूडा सो इज सेइंग दैट योर नेफ्यूज आल्सो फॉट Don't think that Krishna was only killing the demons and fighting. That he and his friends also fought, and it was a very big battle. This was the first world war. People think first world war was in 1914, but first world war was 5,000 years ago, 3,050 AD. Oops. BC, three thousand three hundred BC, something like that. So that was really world war because people came from everywhere to take part in this, and they were divided. Some people were on the side of Yudhishthir, and some were on the side of Duryodhan. Now it is interesting that the name of these two. Brothers, one is called Yudhishthira. Yudha means to fight, and Sthira means stable. Means who is very stable in fighting, not running away. So that's why it's called Yudhishthira. And the other one is also called Duryodhana. Yodha means to fight, fighter. So both were fighter. So what do you expect then? If the two guys are boxers, what do you expect from them? They will do boxing. So Yudhishthira and Duryodhana. 
their names itself signify that they are going to fight. When they were born, they were given these names by the Brahmanas because they saw the astrological calculation and they knew that these people will fight. So they already gave them names. So people took their sides. Some were on the side of Duryodhana, some were side on the side of Yudhishthira. People were actually coming and they were saying, can, can I be on your side? So some were invited and some volunteered themselves. And this was Krishna's plan. He wanted everybody to come together. And instead of disturbing the whole populace, he got them together in one place and got them murdered. Finished. Said so now there is peace on earth. So Patitan Praptan Kurukshetra. So they came to Kurukshetra, which is actually supposed to be Dharamshetra, Dharamshetra, Kurukshetra, Samveta, Yuvetsal. So this is a land of religion, land of piety. But what happened there was battle. So why it happened? Because sometimes piety also means removing the bad elements. It's like doctor has to cure your disease, sometimes he has to do an operation to remove some part or remove some pus or some growth. So like that religious people also have to do that. So this is what happened in Dharam Kshetra. Otherwise it is a peaceful place. It is a holy place, Kurukshetra. It's not a battlefield. This is where Bhagavad Gita was spoken. So he says, Apatatam Agachatam, when they were coming, Yesham Balaihi Sanni Bhu Sarvapi Chachalas Chakampe. But when the armies were moving in, then the earth was shaking. This is what happened. And then he is not going into the details. He speaks of the last day what happened. Sakarna dusasana sobalanam kumantra pakena hatasri ayusham suyodhanam sanu charam shayanam bhagno rum vyam nanandapashyam. So basically, there were four people who were troublesome in the Kauravas side. One was Duryodhan, of course, he was the ringmaster, ringleader. He was the chief, Bin Laden. <laughs> and then he had his younger brother, Dusasan. And he had a friend, Karna. And he has his maternal uncle, Shakuni. So this is four people and they plotted. So Duryodhana was given ill advice by these three, Karna, Dusasana and Shakuni. By himself he would not have done it. Himself was also problematic but if there is somebody and he gets no support from anywhere, then what can he do? So Duryodhana he was supported by these three. They were all the time inspiring him and convincing him that you have to fight, don't worry, we are with you. And Karna was a very big fighter and Shakuni was just very politically minded person. So he says that these three people, they gave ill advice, Kumantrana. And what was the outcome of that ill advice? That Duryodhana lost all his power. Hatha Shriya Ayushan. His beauty and his life. Because he has already done so many sinful activities on the advice of these three guys. First he gambled and invited the Pandavas who were not interested. But he asked his father to invite them. 
and then he cheated them in the gambling and when they lost then he insulted Draupadi in front of everybody tried to strip her in Los Angeles he was a queen imagine a queen being stripped so there is a saying that king has no clothes but he has the queen had no clothes because this was unfolded it's only by Krishna's grace that he was not successful and then when they went to the forest then he tried also to trouble them there when they came back he did not give them their share so by doing all these activities he lost his beauty and life span because if you perform sinful activities then you lose your life there is two types two types of death akal mrityu and kala mrityu right jyotis astrology says so there is 100 types of akal mrityu untimely death and untimely death comes because of sinful actions if one person has performed sinful activities in this life or previous life then he will die in some accident before it is time to die so duryodhan also lost his life and also all other people who plotted and supported him so that's why they had to be finished so then this battle was there for 18 days mahabharat is full of these stories and all the great heroes of india they were killed in that so that was the time when many many great personalities they died many great scientists technicians who knew various types of arts they were killed and finally duryodhana on the last day 18th day duryodhana was still alive and everybody got killed and this shalya who was the commander in chief he also got killed so then duryodhana ran away after everybody was killed he ran away and krishna was not going to leave him. so there was a man hunt and you can imagine this miles and miles of this area full of dead bodies and not only bodies of human beings but elephants and horses so this was battle fought with elephants and horses <coughs> so he found out there was a big search then they came to know that he has entered a pond so duryodhana knew the art which is called jalbandha jalbandha is a yogic technique that you can go inside water and sit and breathe you will not drown so he thought that if he will remain outside then they will search him and kill him so like terrorists come and they drop a bomb and indian police is trying to search them so he thought he goes inside the water nobody will see him he was very clever so he went in but then somebody saw him and informed krishna so krishna went there with the pandavas and he tried to play on his ego and he says you are such a great hero you are a kshatriya and kshatriya never runs away from the battle <coughs> how come you are doing it it should come out <laughs> and duryodhan he was also intelligent he knew krishna very well so he says no i am 
I'm not interested anymore. I lost everything. I'm not coming. Krishna said, no, 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 you come out. And finally, they tricked him. He says that you come out and Yudhishthir said that you come out and you can choose to fight with any one of us five brothers and the way you like. So when he said this, Krishna became very angry at Yudhishthir. He says, you are stupid and you are going to now again lose, you are again gambling. What if he comes out and he says that he is going to fight with you with the club? Can you defeat him in the club fight? Because nobody could defeat him, the Duryodhana. That's why he's called the Duryodhana. He's a strong fighter in club fight. Only Bhima. He says, what if he chooses? Then what will he do? He will kill you and then he will become king. So the, the deal was that if he defeats any one of them, then he becomes the king. He gets the whole kingdom. So, fortunately, Duryodhan became proud by now and he says, I will fight with Bhima. What is the use of fighting with these other weaklings to be disgrace for me to fight with them? So he says, I come out and I will fight with Bhima, who is a match for me. So Duryodhan has practiced 12 years, actually 13 years. He was practicing club because he knew that the only danger will be if Bhima comes and fights with him. Because Bhima took the vow that he is going to kill all the Kauravas. So he knew that Arjuna will not kill him. So then Bhima had a fight. And this fight went on, 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 on. Very fierce fight. And then Duryodhan was not being defeated. So then Krishna motioned to Bhima that hit this guy on the thigh. Because you are not supposed to hit below the belt. So then Bhima gave one blow on his thigh. And his thigh broke down and he fell. He had a fracture. So that's what is said in here. Suyodhanam sanu charam shayanam bhagna urum Urviyam. Uri means thai and Urvi means the earth. So he was lying on Urvi with the broken Uru. And when Krishna saw this, that he is lying, he was not dead. But you can imagine how much beating he would have gotten from the club. So his bones were broken, he was lying. And Krishna saw him like this. And he says that Nanananda, he was not happy. After seeing this, Krishna was not happy. The meaning is that he was not yet satisfied. Not happy does not mean that he was unhappy that this guy is lying. No, he was happy that this guy is lying. But he was not satisfied thinking that still more people have to be killed. This is not enough yet. That is the meaning. Although Nananda literally means that he was not happy. It means no Ananda. No Ananda means no Ananda yet. I am not satisfied yet. So in the olden days, in the villages, there used to be this gymnasts. There is one class of people. Their job was only to do gymnastics and go from village to village and do gymnastics and get some donation. So there is one guy who is the chief and he had a dumbru in his hand and he will play this dumbru and everybody comes together and then his son usually will be doing the gymnastics, walking on the rope and jumping this way and bending upside down. So he will always say, no, 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 no. He, whatever he will do, he will say, no, this is not sufficient, you have to do more. So it is something like this, Krishna is saying, no, 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 no this is not enough. <laughs> After so many people were killed, still he was not satisfied. 
Sai Krishna Pasya Napi Nananda. There's not much comment. He says that although Krishna saw this, but after seeing this, he was not satisfied. And why he was not satisfied, that is being described in the next verse. Kiyan bhuvoyam chapitoru bharo yadrona bhismaryu nabhima mulaihi ashtada sakshani ko madansai astevalam durvasaham yadunam. He says, What is this that I have relieved this earth's burden by killing eighteen akshani of army? using Dronacharya, Bhishma, Arjuna and Bhima because these were the big fighters who killed a lot of people. Bhishma was killing left and right, Arjuna, Bhima and Dronacharya. So he says, what is this? I only got killed 18 Akshani. Not much. One Akshani means 21,870 elephants. So 18 Akshani will be 3,93,660 elephants. These many elephants were killed. Means 393,000 elephants. And elephant was killed means also one guy to drive it and another to fight. So you can imagine two in each elephant at least. And 21,870 chariots. And again, with each chariot, at least two people one fighter and one driver, minimum. There used to be also people to protect their wheels, especially for the big fighters. And 65,610. Horses, cavalry. So one horse, one man. And 109,350, they call this foot soldiers. Infantry. Infantry. So this makes one Akshani. And this together. And 18 such were killed. Because 11 were on the side of Duryodhana and 7 were on the side of Pandavas. So that many elephants, horses, chariots, you can imagine what a big destruction and full of dead bodies. And who remove all these mountains of dead bodies? And full of stench and vultures and jackals coming and eating these dead bodies. There was no possibility of burning or burying so many bodies. So this was the field of dead bodies and blood everywhere. And somebody's hand is cut, somebody's head is cut, somebody's leg is cut. Some people were not even dead, they are just lying and crying. For water, there is no one to take care of them. There was no Red Cross in those days. So even Duryodhana, he was lying down and they left him like this. He was not killed. His legs were broken. Could not sit down. The whole body was paining. You can imagine how many arrows would have entered into their body wounds. And then they left him there like this. It is described that at night the jackals were coming and trying to drink his hot blood and he was not able to ward them off. So, such a terrible situation. And Krishna says that even this is not sufficient because still my family members are there. He got his own family members also killed. So now imagine how many family members he had. Because he had 
160,000 sons and they were all married. When Krishna left the planet, he was 125 years old. So in India, people get married around 25 in those days. When he so already his sons, they got married when they were 25. So they had son when they had they were 26 and then when they became 25 then Krishna's sons were 50 and they had so he would have had great great grandsons and if all through the line they would have produced even two to three three children if not ten like Krishna and even had few wives can you imagine the family of Krishna, how big that was? It was bigger than Kurukshetra. It will run into millions. Because even the teachers to teach the family members of Krishna were into some, I don't know how many thousands. But he has to build few universities just for his own family. So that's why he said that what is this Shapito Uru Bharo that I have removed big burden, I have not removed yet. Look at my family. Once I leave, then they will plunder the earth. Because they will think, who can stop us? We are the descendants of Krishna. So they will become proud. So I have to also remove them before I leave. So he also got all his family members killed in front of his own eyes. So there is a very big commentary on this. Tatra Hetuhu Kyaniti. Why Krishna was not satisfied after the battle of Kurukshetra? He said, Yes, I have achieved something. So many of these unrighteous people who were causing disturbance in the society have been removed. But still, not everybody. Yato dronadivhir mulaihi karan bhutair ashtadaksh akshonir bhara bhuva bhara uru yatha syat tatha kshapita. I am Kiyan. Says so I have removed 18 akshoni worth of burden from the earth. But how much is it? This is insignificant. This is not enough. I have some more work to do. Sandhir Arsha some grammatical because there should be no Sandhi here. Shapita Uru Bhari. And Samasvya Kyam Vidhayan Savimar Sodhavya. Or if you consider it as a Sandhi, no problem, then another problem comes. So that is grammatical. Nesman Madansaihi Pradyumanadi Bhir Hetu Bhutai Durvasham Balamaste. He says there is a very big power living in Dwarka being pro protected by my expansions, such as Pradyumna, who was one of his chief sons. Now, the question which is raised here, and it's very interesting how he answers now, the commentator. That we can understand that people who are unrighteous, they are burden on earth. But why Krishna's children are burden? They are all devotees of Krishna. They belong to his family. They were not demons. They were not asura. They were not causing any disturbance anywhere. So how that can be a burden? So for this he is raising this question. He says, Nanu bhubhara stavad vyakti bahulena nasyat parvat samudradi nam tatr prachuryat. So he says that earth is not burdened because there are too many people on earth. Why? He says there are so many mountains and even one mountain is more than all the weight of human beings. So earth is not burdened just because there are too many people. So what causes the burden on earth? What is called burden of earth? Especially in India, he is saying, he is a burden on earth. 
somebody who is impious or useless. They say this guy is just a burden on earth. So burden on earth is not because there is physical burden. He says, Kintu adharmik prachuryene. When there are irreligious people not following the code of Shastra, scriptures, moral principles, then earth feels burdened. So that's why then there is an earthquake or tsunami or something like this because earth is destroyed. Earth is also a being. It's not dead matter. Earth is also living. It has life. So they have this Gaia theory. You heard about it? No? Go on Google and check out. So even Western people accept that it is it has some self-correcting ability in it. They call it Gaia theory. One scientist gave this. So the burden is when people are not following principles. If you have a family, suppose they are because these days families are not big. We call this the satellite family. Which means, really speaking, there is nobody in that family. <laughs> like satellite, two, three people are there. And there are ten people in one satellite. So these days they have satellite families. But suppose you have even husband, wife and two children. And if these children are well behaved, disciplined, you don't feel any problem. But if one children is not well behaved and is very naughty and restless, then he will make the life of other three members hellish. So similarly, if there are people living on earth and they are not well behaved, then they disturb so many other people. Then you have 9-11 and 11-26 or whatever. And these types of things happen. So therefore, adharmika, the irreligious people are the burden on earth. Not increase in population, but increase in the number of irreligious people. That is the cause. Techa adharmika bhagavata samhrita eva he says that these adharmika, irreligious people, they were already killed by now. Krishna killed himself many. And whatever was remaining, they were all killed at the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So the burden is removed. Why the earth is burdened now? Na yadu kulasya adharmikattum vachyam And you cannot say that Krishna's family members were irreligious. That is not true. Bhagavat Parikar Rupatvat, they are all his personal associates. There is no chance that they can be irreligious. And then he quotes a verse Brahmanya Nam, Vadanya Nam, Nityam Vridhop, Sevi Nam, Viprashapaha Katham Abhut, Vrishni Nam, Krishna Chetasam. Shaya Asana Atana Alap Kridasnana Shnadi Shu, Nevidhu Santamatmanam. Vrishnaha, Vrishnaya, Krishna Chetasai, Tyadi Yukti Bhyasya. So this will come later on in uh, 12th canto, I think, that the family members of Krishna, they were very devoted to the Brahmanas, this priestly class. They were very charitable and always respectful to the senior people. How is that they were cursed? by the Vipras. They, when they were great devotees and their minds were fixed on Krishna. And whether they were sleeping or sitting down or wandering or talking or playing or taking bath or eating, they never forgot Krishna. Navidhu Santam Atmanam Vishnayaha Krishna Chaitasa Their Chaitasa, their heart was not in their own bodies. It was as if in Krishna himself. The person says, Navidu Santa Vatmanam. They did not know their own body. They did not care 
for themselves. Their mind was so much absorbed in Krishna that they did not pay attention even to their own bodies. So how is that such people were cursed and how can they be considered as burden? So for this he gives his explanation. Says Atra Uchyate Bharo Hi Dvividho Bhavati Says burden is of two types Dukha Rupa Sukha Rupa One is the troublesome burden and one is pleasurable burden If somebody gives you one million dollars suppose now it may have a weight that if you have to carry it on your back, it may be a burden. But it is a pleasurable burden. You don't mind. You can struggle to take it. <laughs> it is a burden indeed. But it is not something which is disturbing you. So he says that burden, heaviness, is of two types. Dukrupa, Sukrupa. <coughs> Prathamo Dussaha says the first one is intolerable. That it's very troublesome, you really don't like it. You have to carry something for somebody else. The money is not for you. Then it's a problem. So you'll all the time you'll be thinking why you have to do this. So that is the first type. And the second type, Dutiyastu Subaha Eva. And the second one is pleasing. <coughs> and Yatha Yuvatyaha Swaramanasya Bhara. So he gives that if a person, if a boy loves a girl or a girl loves a boy, then if they have to carry each other, they don't mind. Yathacha avalaya matraha svapotasya krodaya kritasya bhara Or if there is a mother and she has the husband is dead and she has a son who is born, child, some husband died. She feels very happy with this son and she is playing with this son in her lap, she does not feel this as a burden. If she had to carry somebody else's child, then she may feel burden, but her own child is not a burden. So he says, this is not heavy or bhar. Yathacha vanija sirashi dhritasya svadhanasya bhara. And he gives the same example, if there is a businessman and he has to carry money, and in the olden days there was no paper money. The money was also made from gold or silver. Gold coins, silver coins, so they were heavy. And they used to tie them in a belt around the waist. So it says they feel the weight, but they don't complain about it. Kincha alpa balena janena swasmad ati bahula sukhrupo api bharo vodhum na shakyate. And he says that if somebody is very weak, not very strong, and he has to carry even money, then still he will not feel very happy with it if he doesn't have strength. Although he likes to have money, but if he has to carry 20 kg of coins on his head, then he is not happy if he is weak. So he says similarly, Yatha Paramadharmikasya Mahabhagavatasya Tapobal Adhikyam Avish Kurvato Dhruvasya Pi Bhara Prithivya. Dhru Maharaj was a child, as a five year old boy. He went to forest and he was performing austerities there. And when he became perfect in his austerities, means he became Siddha. Then the earth was not able to tolerate his weight. 
So it is said that Arthur was dipping to the one side because he was standing on one foot. So although this is a pleasurable burden because now Dhruva is not somebody who is a disturbing element. But earth is weak to carry this weight. So this is also problematic for a weak person. Yaduktam yadeka padena saparthi varbhakas tastho tadangustha nipidita mahi nanama tatraardham abhindra ishtita tariva sabye tarta pade pade. So as it is described from that incident that when he was standing on one leg, this young prince, then the earth was as if being pressurized by the toe of Dhruva Maharaj. She was feeling the burden and it bent Ardham Ibhendra Adhishtita Tariva Savya Italata bent towards the side of the left. He was on, standing on the left leg. So just like if you have a boat and in the boat you want to carry an elephant. In India sometimes elephant has to cross the river. They put the elephant in the boat. So when he steps in, and naturally the boat tips to that side. Because it cannot take such a heavy burden. So earth also tipped like that. So suddenly there was a movement. So this movement of earth is not because of demoniac people burdening her, but because of greatness of Dhruva. So that is the type of burden which is from the devotees, the family members of Krishna. Iti yadacha bhagavatapi svabalam aviskriyate tadatasya parmananda rupasya api bharo na vodhum shakyate. So then in the same way when Lord himself manifests his strength, then although it is very pleasing, but earth is not able to tolerate it. Does not have the ability. Yatha Bhisma Stutau Dhrita Ratha Charno Abhyan Chalat Guriti. So, as it is described in the prayers of Bhisma, Bhisma, when he was lying down on the deathbed and Krishna came there to see him. Then Bhisma recited very nice prayers to Krishna and he was remembering the day when he was fighting and Arjuna was on the opposite side and Krishna was driving the chariot and Bhisma has put Arjuna into trouble and Arjuna was about to be killed. So at that time Krishna, although he didn't have any weapon and he has taken a vow not to participate in this battle, but when he saw that Arjuna is in big danger, then he jumped from the chariot and he became so angry and he took a broken wheel in his hand and he ran to hit Bhishma. So Bhishma, when lying down now, he is remembering that scene and when he saw Krishna coming like this, he dropped fighting. He was so much awestruck by Krishna's anger. So there he described that Dhrita Ratha Charano, that Krishna was holding the wheel in his hand, Abhya Anchala, then he was coming, he says the earth was shaking. Because at that time Krishna manifested his anger and his strength. He was not just anymore the driver of the chariot. So the earth was trembling. So that is not some disturbing power, but positive power, but earth is not having the ability to hold this. Nursing avir bhavecha protsar pat kshamacha padhabi pirita. Similarly, <coughs> when Lord Narsingha Dev appeared from the column. column and then he moved to catch Hiranyakashipu. So again you can imagine Lord Narsingha Dev completely furious. 
So he was so angry and he wanted to get this Hiranyakashipu. So when he moved and Hiranyakashipu was running, so like cat is chasing the rat. And the rat is running around and cat is jumping up and down. So the earth was also shaking at that time. So it's not that Narsim Dev caught Hiranyakashipu immediately. No, there was a lot of running around and chasing. He ran up and down everywhere. Finally he caught. So there also it says Prat Sarpataha Kshamacha Padavi Pidika that being hit by the feet of Lord Narasimha Dev, the earth was moving. Ato Atra Yadapi Yadukula Se Bhara Prithivya Bharat Vena Navi Manyate. So here also, although earth is not considering the family members of Lord Krishna as burden, Yatha Sukumarya Pistriya Bahuswana Ratna Di Avhana Bharas Tadapi Premvata Tant Kantena. Tadange bhe kashan kashana utsavado avantuke eva avharan bharo niskashate sthapyatecha. So just like that there is some beautiful, very tender young woman and she may have many golden ornaments, then she does not consider them as a burden. Right? Nice ornaments. But the lover who loves her very much then out of love sometimes he puts some more ornaments sometimes he removes so like that Krishna brought the yadus who are like ornament for the earth now he wants to take them away that is the meaning Sarvada upyogi tathaiva ansa avatarana samedita parikar rupa su yadavada su ye devadeva ansa pravishta teva dvarkato niskramya prabhasat samedita. So uh, he gives the ultimate meaning. The meaning behind is that when Lord Krishna appeared, then he came along with his associates, the yadavas. At that time, the demigods their expansions also entered in them and now they have to go back to their places so this thing has to be enacted that mm -hmm. the other words will become manifest mm -hmm. the ornament removed and the demigods go back to their places that is the meaning of removing the burden so it is the second type of burden not the first type So it seems that uh, the earth is very conscious of what is happening on her body. Yes. Now, this is also now, and it's always like this. Always. So that means that if somebody is digging or somebody put a bomb or I don't know, it's like a gallery, for example, or a mine, she's also. Yes, he also feels Killing. but more burden is religious people than like this type. Yeah. So now she this she can tolerate. So Krishna removed the, the burden of the earth and established peace, but then immediately after Kali Yuga started. Now there's more burden. So, how long was this peaceful period? <laughs> well, at least as long as Parikshit was there, because first Yudhishthira ruled for 37 years, and then Kaliga was not entered in yet. Kaliga entered when Krishna disappeared. So, 37 years. There was no Kaliga. Then Parikshit came. And when Parikshit came, then Kaliga was already there. And then he was spreading his influence. So then he chastised Kaliga. 
and Kaliga was not able to proliferate very much in his kingdom. Then as his son Janmaja then slowly it started increasing. So maybe for a few hundred years at least. Nice atmosphere. Um, you mentioned how Bhishma broke the thigh of Duryodhana. Bhima. Sorry, Bhima broke the thigh of Duryodhana, which is actually against the rules of proper fighting. Right? Yeah. So I remember reading how Balaram became very angry, right? And Krishna spoke to him and pacified him somewhat. And within speaking, it was written where I read it, um, that um, the whole war was based on duplicity and um, all sorts of bad things. So how can somebody be expected to fight according to the rules when the, the other side is breaking all the rules, right? So um, I, I've experienced where devotees have used the situation where Bhima actually broke the rule, but where he's a devotee, you know, and devotees are meant to be doing everything proper, etc. But uh, um, they're, they're using that to say that, well, actually, when the situation is that you're a up against an um, improper element, that you're not obliged to behave in the paka way. So I would like to understand this a bit more and how to balance this, in, especially in present day life here, because you're surrounded by these you know, improper ways. Yeah, so the principle is simple principle that don't cheat and don't get cheated. So if you don't cheat, okay, I, I follow the principle, I don't cheat. But when I don't get cheated, then I may have to play tricks. Because somebody is going to come and cheat you. Mm -hmm. And you may have to tell lies to this person. Otherwise mm -hmm. he will cheat you. But you have to be conscious of it. That I am doing this. Not that I want to cheat him. But I don't want to get cheated. So you have to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. from unrighteous people. Otherwise, you are also not following Dharma because you are giving him the chance to mm -hmm. propagate mm -hmm. impiety. Mm -hmm. So you have to follow religious principle yourself and also, as far as possible, make sure that others don't propagate it. Don't take advantage. It. Yeah. Otherwise, you are giving not only that he is going to take advantage of you, but you are allowing him mm -hmm. to do something wrong. So by not getting cheated, by stopping him, you are also helping that person. Mm -hmm. And if he meets people like you everywhere that he cannot cheat, then ultimately he will be forced that I better do something else. <laughs> but if he finds soft target, when he's happy, then he will go on. So this is what Krishna taught in this battlefield of Kurukshetra. That whether it was Bhishma or Dronacharya or Karna, they were all killed by a trick. So just to say that these are the same people who were making so many tricks against you. And now, if you have to remove them by trick, then don't do anything. But it doesn't mean that you become like them and then start playing these tricks on innocent people. Yeah, because also you, this year he was saying, okay, you come out and you can choose. He was still right, too much right. He was, no, so to he was still making a mistake. Yeah, yeah. same mistake. Yeah. So that's why Krishna was upset with him, that you have still not learned the polity, stratagem.
Okay.